Hi everyone, Kyle here from Bostic Family Light Show. I'm super excited to be with you today. We are going over our fourth video in our how-to series. If you haven't seen parts one through three, you can check them out up here. In this video, we are gonna go over pixels and power injection. When we first started out, we had some outlines set up with WLED and Dr. Z's showed us quite a bit about how to interact with pixels and control them. And we made a special little thank you video for him. We ran into quite a few problems with our outlines and the strips that we were using. So we're gonna go over some of the differences and hopefully help you avoid any problems that we ran into. We're gonna go over our icicles, floodlights, a few different types of strips. We're gonna go over five and 12 volt strings, DMX bracelets, and our P5 panel. We have a lot of information in this video, so let's dive in. First up, we have the icicles. These are 12 volt icicles, and they came in 105 count. In x lights, you would configure them seven by seven, which means that there are seven in a string going horizontally, and then the drops are seven LEDs. The wire in between the drops are your standard three wire. The drop wiring though is four, and the reason for that is because the data will come through the pixel string, go down, and then it needs a data return channel. The data return channel is going to go back up and then once it gets back to this pixel, it will join and continue on to the next pixel. In these, we did do power injection. We did it at the end. I'll go through more power injection a little bit later, but we have these adapters that we just plug in and then we also have the rear loop connector. So we can go to the next string if we want, or if it is the end, we can put a little cap on it to make sure that it is sealed and weatherproof. So these have a really nice color, nice and uniform. We use these for our Halloween and our Christmas show, and they really allowed us to add and highlight certain effects. When you use things like a shader or things in a group, like an all effect, Having icicles or more dense props really allow you to fill in some of those gaps and you can really see the effect that you're going for. Next up, we have our floodlights. We have the ones from Holiday Lighting and from Wired Watts. They both are the same weatherproofing, they're IP66. They are both 12 volt, 10 watt floods and they work really well if you are trying to illuminate the exterior of a house or a tree, shrubbery, things like that. You can get some really nice effects that just add more depth to your show. Next up, we have our five volt strips. These strips are IP67 rated. Normally, we do not recommend using strips. Strips are more prone to failing. They are not as reliable as your normal pixel strings. But if you're using these inside an arch or somewhere where they'll be protected, then there are a few good reasons to use them. In our case, we tried using these IP67 rated strips for our house outline. We're in Michigan and after a season or two, the strips themselves became all corroded. The jacket that encased these LED strips is not attached to the actual circuit board. And because of this, this will fill up with moisture and then ultimately cause the board and LEDs to corrode and then they'll stop working. We also have our 12 volt strips here. These particular ones are IP30, which means there is no weatherproofing on them at all. These are not designed to go outdoors. I don't recommend using these even inside something like hex tubing for an arch. These are designed for indoor use where they will be away from moisture. And then we also have our IP65 rated strips. These strips are what we used for our arches and they have this silicone that is applied directly to the LED strip itself. This gives it a little more weatherproofing. In our case, there's no room for condensation or moisture to build up between the LEDs and the silicone protective coating. 
We've had good luck with these so far. They are still finicky. They break easily. We did have to do a few repairs for our arches in our first season. So again, I would recommend against using strips, but if you're gonna use them in a colder or wet climate, I would recommend the IP65 rated strips. Those have worked the best for us so far. The strips usually use a different RGB order. So when you are designing a show inside x -Lights, you're gonna set most of your WS2811 pixels to RGB. In this case, some of these are BRG and the others are GRB. When you order the strips, the manufacturer will list the order and then you can go into x or your controller and you can adjust that. That way when you send red, they'll be red and they'll match. The strips themselves, you will also have to do power injection. If you are not cutting the end of the strip, they come with these little pigtails typically and they design it so you can add power injection. If you are cutting them to use custom links or something like that, there are these little solder pads in here and you can add your own power injection by soldering directly to these. Again, these are very finicky. You can overheat or melt the circuit board and damage the pixels. So you gotta be very careful. And if you are cutting in and removing silicone or any of the weatherproof protective coating, you wanna make sure that you reapply hot glue or some type of silicone where it will be sealed again. Next up, we have our five volt pixel string. This is what we use for a majority of our show. We use these for our outlines and most of our props. The exception would be the floodlights, the icicles, and a few other props, but the vast majority of our shows were using 5-volt pixels. With 5-volt pixels, you will have to do power injection more often. A general rule of thumb is every 50 pixels or so. The voltage will go forwards and backwards, so if you have a string of 100 pixels, you can add power at the beginning and the end of the strip and you'll have the beginning strip one through 50 and then you'll have the end go from 100 back to 51. That way you are no farther than 50 pixels before you have power injection. With that power injection, it is recommended to make sure that it's fused if you drop the brightness from 100% down to 30, like most of us run the shows at, you may be able to get a little more than 50 pixels before you start seeing that color change. I'll show you an example on our singing tree. It has a couple hundred LEDs, and I'll show it to you without any power injection, and then we'll add the power injection, and you'll be able to see the color difference. So you can see the tree does not look white right now. The eyes are white, but you can see it quickly changes to a yellow and a dark red color. And that's because it is losing voltage. And this is what happens if you're not using power injection. So I'll go ahead and connect the power injection plug and you can see how it will change over to a more bright uniform white color. So you can see after connecting the power injection adapter, it is a much more bright white. It's a pretty uniform color. There are a few spots where it isn't bright white, it's starting to turn to a yellow color, but overall it looks pretty good. It looks a lot better than it did before. And this is why you need to do power injection so you don't have the voltage drop and you don't have that discoloration. Next up, we have our 12 volt pixel string. And in our case, I wanted to show you how we would go about adding our solder sleeves or power injection connector. So to do that, you would get the wire strip back. And then once you have the wiring stripped back, you wanna make sure that you have the correct wire going to the correct wire, ground to ground, data to data, etc. And then you can use these solder sleeves and what these will do is they will melt. They have a heat shrink property to them. They'll melt and seal around the wire to make sure that they're weatherproof. And then this little bead of solder right here will melt and give you a solid connection.
Once you have the wire in the solder sleeves, you can go ahead and take a heat gun and start to apply heat. You don't want to hold it in one spot too long. You want to kind of move the heat gun around so you don't accidentally overheat the one particular area or melt the heat shrink. Once you've melted the solder around, then you'll want it to cool. So go ahead and leave it for a minute or so. It'll be nice and cool. It will be more rigid and then you should be able to connect power to it. These are the wires we use for power injection. They are a two wire 16 gauge red and black automotive connector or marine connector. And what we do is we will add these connectors to our props in various locations, usually around every 100 pixels or so. And then we have these other connectors that we will put on the ends of the wire that we use to run the power injection. These are also on the end of our controllers, so that way we can connect them and then just plug in directly to the props. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you how we add these to our pixel strength. So wherever you want to add the power injection, what you can do is basically just pull the ground and power away from the data. And then the wire is not stripped yet. So you can just strip off a little piece. You can also cut these if you want and you can add heat shrinking or you can use the solder sleeves for that as well. If you're doing it in the middle of a pixel string, then we normally just solder onto these and then from there we'll use some type of adhesive or waterproof tape or something like that. And then what you're going to do is take the power injection connector, make sure that you have the black wire going to the ground wire on the pixel string. Go ahead and make sure that you get the wire wrapped around a few times. Make sure you have a nice solid connection. You can also do a military splice or a poke and wrap where you poke a hole through the wire and then put the power injection wire through it. And then once this is done, we will typically solder these and then seal them with some type of weatherproof tape. And then from here, We will use our power injection wiring, which looks like this. It is 18 gauge four wire shielded security wire. And these will just plug in to the end of our props and the other ends will plug into our controller. And we have a few different lengths of these so we can run them to the various props. You can set up your props and kind of determine how many you need. You can look to see if you're seeing a lot of discoloration, depending on the brightness you run your show at, how many effects you have in you know, full white or a darker color. You may not need it as often or every 50 pixels like we are. I like having the ability to run our show at 100% white and not see color variations. So I try to do it around every 50 pixels if I notice that any particular area is not a bright white, when it's set to 100% white, then I will usually go back and add power injection to make sure that we get that uniform color. Along the lines of power injection, we have these null pixels. And what a null pixel does is it will repeat the data signal and rebroadcast it. So if you need to travel a long distance between pixel strands or between the controller and the first pixel, you can use these null pixels. You can use a traditional pixel as well. You can also use an F-amp. This F-amp is going to do the same thing. It's going to rebroadcast that signal, but there isn't an actual pixel in here. It's just a little circuit board. We're super excited. We have these new bracelets we've incorporated to the show. We are going to be adding these for Halloween and Christmas. The bracelets themselves have a distance of around a thousand feet or so. So you can put the bracelet on and walk down the street and it will be in sync with our show. We're super excited. We'll have more details about this coming soon. But these will receive an RF signal from a DMX controller. So in x lights you'll set up a DMX controller and that will broadcast the signal with RF to these bracelets. 
And then anytime you come check out the show, if you bring the bracelet, it will automatically sync and receive that signal and they will start to light up whatever color we want them to be in sync with the show. The last thing I want to touch on are panels. P10 and P5 panels have become increasingly popular with this hobby. The number P5 or P10 represents the distance between pixels. So a P5 is five millimeters between pixels and with a panel like this, you can get a much higher resolution image or video to go along with your show. If you're doing a song that is from a movie or something like that, you could add a video clip to it and you would get a much better output or result than you would if you were trying to use traditional pixels. They're also great if you want to use them for a tune to sign or an informational panel. So you could do like a show countdown, information about social media and things like that. Panels are a great option. I have a full build video for this coming out soon, and we'll show you how to build and configure the panel. We know there was a lot of information in this video. Hopefully it was helpful, but if you still have questions, leave a comment or send us a message. We'll be happy to help any way we can. If you enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe so you see our next videos. See you next time.